these guys really hate spiders, so much so that they teamed up. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we will explore the comic book origins of the Sinister Six. Now then, Arachnid, any last words? As with most comic book characters, there are often reimaginings and different versions to a character's past. We've chosen to primarily follow the storyline which unfolded in 1964's The Amazing Spider-Man Annual No. 1, which was expanded upon in 1990's issues No. 334 to 339. Dr. Octopus originally conceived of this diabolical team-up in response to the webcrawler having regularly foiled his plans. Escaping from prison with only vengeance on his mind, Octopus immediately sought the help of other supervillains that had tried and failed to best the webslinger one-on-one. As it turned out, the timing couldn't have been worse for Spider-Man, as the hero was experiencing sudden problems with his abilities. This was caused by a burst of regret and remorse for not having prevented the death of his uncle while finding himself overcome with the stress of balancing his superhero and teenage life. As Peter Parker then found himself a normal teen once more, Dr. Octopus had invited five of Spider-Man's greatest foes to his hideout. These villains included Electro, Mysterio, the Vulture, Sandman, and Kraven the Hunter. Assuming the role of leader, Dr. Octopus revealed his master plan, which consisted of a scheme to force Spider-Man to battle each of them one by one. This was designed to wear him out. Ugh, I'm totally right. Let's face it, I've never actually beaten the six myself. Oh man, I hope it's only six. With the order decided by drawing cards at random, each of these cards revealed a location for their battle that would take advantage of their unique skill sets. The next day, a depressed Peter Parker decided to skip school, going for a walk around the city. During this time, the Sinister Six captured both Miss Brandt, the secretary of the Daily Bugle, as well as Peter Parker's Aunt May, who happened to be nearby. They then instructed the paper's chief editor, J. Jonah Jameson, to tell Spider-Man that he would have to rescue their captives. A powerless Spider-Man hoped that the Fantastic Four, the Avengers, or the X-Men could be of assistance, but all of those teams were unfortunately unavailable. Left without a choice, Peter Parker decided to take them on as a normal teenager. This led him to face off against Electro at a power plant. Won't escape me that easy! It was during this battle that Peter regained his sense of purpose and found his powers returning to him. Defeating Electro by grounding himself and shutting off the power, he went on to his next few challenges. These included facing Kraven the Hunter and his tigers in the woods, Mysterio and his robotic evil doppelgangers of the X-Men in his base, and Sandman in an iron cell, then finally the Vulture across the city's skyline. Finally, Spider-Man came face to face with Doc Ock in a struggle that led underwater. Managing a victory through use of his webbing, having tangled up Dr. Octopus, Spider-Man saved the captives and had the Sinister Six sent back to the Slammer. Following this defeat, Doc Ock eventually decided to reunite the Sinister Six, minus Kraven the Hunter, who had died. Plotting vengeance and aiming to keep the name, they recruited the Hobgoblin to their team. As it turned out, Doc Ock had reunited the team only to further his own plan of ruling the world alone. This second iteration of the team was defeated when Sandman had a change of heart and helped Spider-Man defeat his former allies. Following this, the Sinister Six underwent several roster and even name changes, but all variations continued to seek the same goal, the end of Spider-Man. A popular team-up in any form, the Sinister Six have continued to appear in various media, including video games and cartoons, and eventually surfaced within the Amazing Spider-Man live-action film franchise. Are you a fan of the Spider-Squatchers? For more super comic book origins, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com. Hey, Spidey, don't fade on us now. Sparks and flaps were just the appetizer. Time for the main course.